All right, in this video, I'm going to discuss how to construct a confidence interval for a mean response for a multiple linear regression model. So recall that our multiple linear regression model is y equals x times beta plus epsilon, where y is our response variable, and it's an n by 1 vector. x is our design matrix. It's an n by p matrix. Beta is a p by 1 vector and epsilon is our model error, and that's an n by one vector, okay? So n is our sample size, and p is the number of parameters, okay? So don't forget x, that first column is ones, right, for the intercept, okay? And then you have all your other uh, x variables uh, in that matrix. Okay, so uh, there's the assumption, we're using the assumption right now, that these uh, model error terms are normally distributed with a mean of zero, okay, and that's a vector of zeros, an n by one vector of zeros, and variance sigma squared times i, which i is the n by n index matrix. Okay, so we're using this assumption. Okay, so what we want is to construct a confidence interval for the mean response Y-O. So what is Y-O? Y-O is X-O transpose times beta plus epsilon sub O. All right, so this O, this notation, uh, y naught or x naught, right? This is just saying that it's not necessarily one of our observed values, okay? And uh, x x naught is not necessarily one of our observed x's, okay? And it's going to equal a vector. Uh, one is for the first for the the um, beta naught, right? So for the intercept, so you have one first. And then you have uh, whatever value um, that you want for the first variable, okay? And then whatever value that you want for the second variable, and then whatever value, ha if you have k variables in this model, uh, whatever value you take for the kth variable, okay? So this is a p by one vector, right? So p is the number of parameters, right? Because we have, so beta is beta one, beta, or sorry, beta naught, the intercept, beta one, beta two, all the way through beta k, okay? So there's p parameters here, where p is k plus one for the intercept, okay? So this is also p by one. All right, and that's why I take the transpose, so I get, the transpose makes this a 1 by p times a p by 1, okay? And there's cancel, and you're left with a 1 by 1, which is a scalar. So this y naught is a scalar, all right? So I'm talking about for a particular uh, value of y, uh, given a particular set of x values. Okay, and what I want to construct the confidence interval for is the expected value of these. So I want to construct the confidence interval for the expected value of y naught, right? Basically, the average value of y given a particular x value, okay? And this is going to equal the uh, expected value of x naught transpose times beta plus epsilon naught, which the expected value of epsilon naught is zero by our assumption. So this is going to equal basically an expected value of x naught times beta is just itself because those are just constants, right? Those are fixed values, they're not random. So this is x transpose beta, okay? So this is what we're constructing the confidence interval for. Okay, we don't know beta, so we don't know this value. Right, so we want a confidence interval for this guy. Okay, so what's our estimator going to be? Our estimator is going to be y hat naught. 
So we're going to use this to estimate this expected value. Now what's y hat naught? It's our predicted value of y naught, right? So it's x naught transpose times b. Okay, where b is our least squares estimator. Right, so b is our least squares estimator, which is uh, x transpose x inverse times x transpose y. Okay, and we previously showed this. All right, so if this is my estimator, I need to find an estimate of the variance of this estimator, right, in order to construct a confidence interval. So let's next, let's calculate the variance of this predicted value, which will be the variance of um, x naught transpose times b. Now recall, if you have, so this is a constant, so if I have the variance of a constant times uh, some random vector, okay, so well, maybe I shouldn't use y because uh, I'll just use z, just some random vector here, okay? And a is a constant vector, okay? This is going to equal a times the variance of z times a transpose, okay? So that's just a property of variance. When you pull out a constant vector, you have to multiply it by uh, the vector and then the variance of that vector and then the, um, the vector transposed, okay? So let's use that here. X transpose, X naught transpose, okay? So I'm leaving it alone at first. Then the variance of B then in the back, I need to transpose, x transpose, transpose. Now when you two transposes, you just get back to the original vector. Okay, so I can just delete those. Okay. Now the variance of b, the variance of b, we have found this in a previous video, that this equals sigma squared times x transpose x inverse. Okay, so let's use this, let's plug this in. And we have x naught transpose. Now that sigma squared is a constant, right? So I can just pull it out to the front. Let me go ahead and do that. It's a scalar, right? So I can pull it out to the front. Times x transpose x inverse times x naught. All right, very good. Now, we don't know sigma squared. Okay, so remember sigma squared is the variance of our error terms, our model error terms, right? Epsilon. Well, we don't know what epsilon is because we don't, we don't know the exact model, right? So what we do is we estimate this using S squared, right? Which S squared is our mean squared error. It's the sum of our squared residuals divided by n minus p, right? So that's e transpose e divided by n minus p, where e is our residual vector, the vector of all of our residuals. Remember what's a residual? The residual is our observed y vector divided minus the predicted y vector, okay? Okay, so we're gonna need to plug in this s all right, so the estimate of this variance, sometimes I'll put a hat over that to indicate that it's an estimate of this variance. This is S squared, X naught transpose, X transpose, X inverse times X naught, okay? Now, notice that this, this in the center, this is X, this is our design matrix. It's very different than X naught, which is uh, the values of x that we're, we're working with right now to make this, uh, to, to find this expected value of y, right? So this is uh, just a p by 1 vector versus x is an n by p matrix, much different. All right, so this is, since, since y hat naught is a scalar, 
okay, it's, it's a single value, right? I can take the square root of this and find the standard error of y hat naught. So let's do that. So the standard error of y hat naught is just going to be the square root of this, right? And of course, we can take out this s squared out of the square root, and we end up with s times x naught transpose, x transpose x inverse times x naught. Okay, this is the standard error of y hat naught. Okay, so I have an estimator and I have its standard error, all right, and uh, I, I know the distribution, right? The distribution, it, well, the distribution was normal, okay? Uh, but now that I've had to plug in s squared for sigma squared, it turns out to become a t distribution. So my one minus alpha times 100% confidence interval for the mean response Okay, so for the expected value of y naught is my estimator plus or minus the t distribution, alpha divided by 2, with n minus p degrees of freedom times the standard error of that estimator. So times s x naught transpose, x transpose x, inverse times x naught, okay? And there we have it, that I've derived the one minus alpha percent confidence interval for the mean response at a particular uh, value of x.